When you dive with purpose for Ocean Quest Global, you are expressing your deep desire to conserve and protect the world's coral reefs. As a Sea Shepherd dive, scuba diver, you have experienced the beauty and the fragility of the sensitive and complex coral reef habitat. But if we want to continue to behold these underwater wonders, we must conserve and protect our coral habitats and save this ancient way of life. In this propagation workshop video, you will learn the fundamentals of corals so that you can become a successful coral propagator. You will learn about the corals' vital importance to the ocean and how 70% of all ocean life depends upon the corals, as do the people who live along the coastal regions of the world. You will be introduced to many different coral types and formations and learn how the coral obtains energy to live and build the coral reefs we all enjoy diving. Different reproduction systems will also be presented and all this training will be used in your coral propagation techniques. So let's get started with the coral itself, the tiny, single, coral polyp. What is a coral? Why is it important to the ocean and to people? So just what is a coral? In the sea, the coral structures we observe are actually made of hundreds of individual coral animals, and each one is called a coral polyp. This tiny animal has a mouth an oral disc and tentacles, all neatly contained in a cup-shaped indentation made of calcium carbonate, aptly called a corallite. The polyp uses calcium and other minerals found in seawater and builds its very own little chamber of life. The coral polyp, in fact, secretes its own skeletal structure through a process called calcification. The living coral polyp, together with its skeleton, is called the corallum. Coral colonies contribute to people's livelihoods by building strong coral reef structures that protect both land and sea creatures during seasonal weather and catastrophic storms. Healthy and abundant coral colonies, or coral reefs, have immense economic potential for people living in coastal areas through recreation, tourism, and fishing. Without a strong and healthy coral reef, the coast erodes and a way of life next to the ocean is sadly lost. Corals also contribute to the food chain during all phases of their life cycles. Planktivores such as fish and sea fans and even seahorses feast upon the coral spawn during the early stage of their lives. Then, ocean grazers and scavengers, such as bottom-dwelling sea urchins, depend upon the coral spawns when it settles to the sea floor. Then these benthic bits of life go through a magical metamorphosis and the juvenile coral polyp finally develops and grows that mouth and tentacles well on its way to contributing to the mature coral reef we enjoy exploring when we dive. Eventually they too will mature and repeat this endless cycle of life under the sea. There are two types of corals, hard and soft, and they can come in many different sizes, shapes, and forms. This section of Ocean Quest coursework mainly concentrates on the propagation of hard corals or hermatypic corals.
and bees come in many different colors, formations, and species. To keep things simple, we'll divide the corals into categories based on the corals' shapes and forms for this level of training. If you would like to continue your training after this coursework, you will be able to learn the scientific names and identifications. But for now, the main types of corals include these simple categories. There are massive corals. Intricate branching corals. and graceful table corals. There are leafy plate-like corals that defy imagination. Some corals prefer to grow in clusters. And can actually encrust rocks or other corals and structures found on the ocean floor with their beauty and their life-giving purpose. There are even solitary corals, like the mushroom coral. Your Sea Shepherd Dive trainer will introduce you to the corals found in your location as part of your propagation training experience. Corals have two ways of getting the energy they need to live, grow, and reproduce. At night, when microscopic organisms called plankton rise from the deep ocean up into the more shallow waters where the corals live, the corals actually feed on the plankton. They ingest their food similar to the way we eat and digest our food and this process for corals is called heterotrophy. But corals are unique in that they get supplementary energy during the day when the sun is shining brightly by using photosynthesis. The corals have an amazing symbiotic relationship with algae cells that live within the coral's polyps. These plant cells are called zooxanthellae, and this algae coexists with the corals, and this phototrophic ability to use sunlight also gives the corals a rainbow of colors that actually come from the different kinds of zooxanthellae plant cells living symbiotically within the coral's polyps giving color to the rest of the corallum. There are some corals that have no ability to generate energy through photosynthesis, so they rely entirely on heterotrophy. These types of corals are found on darker shaded walls and in deeper waters than their sun-loving cousins. These different types of energy production make corals unique in being able to receive nutrition from two completely different systems. These polytrophic and heterotrophic coral animals have successfully survived millions of years and thrive in virtually every ocean on Earth.
When it comes to reproducing, the corals have more than one way to continue life in the ocean, just like the different ways they can get food. Corals can reproduce by sexual and asexual means. Corals reproduce sexually either by internal or external fertilization. The eggs are released into the ocean in a process known as synchronized spawning. Externally fertilized eggs develop while adrift in the sea's currents. Free swimming larvae hatched from these eggs are released into the water and settle within days. Once the coral larvae settles on a substrate, such as a rock or a bit of aragonite, it then develops into a coral polyp. Asexual reproduction is called intratecticular budding, and this occurs more in the middle of the colony. Extratenticular budding, which happens on the edge of the colony, is near other coral species and ocean structures. Coral colonies also reproduce through coral fragmentation. Some corals reproduce through autotomy, where the coral will split itself into pieces and continue to grow new corals from the original mother coral, colonizing the spaces around them. So now you have a tremendous beginning to your coral gardening journey. You have a fundamental knowledge of what corals are made from, how they eat, how they live, and how they reproduce, and just how important they are to the survival of all life above and below the sea.